everybody, this is the Andy Person here, and today I'm gonna be trying to illustrate why StarCraft 2 is the hardest game, well, one of the hardest games you can play. There are certainly games out there that test your, um, metal, uh, but this one is one that does not stop. This one, there's, as far as I know, there's no real skill limit. There's not gonna ever be the best person in the world definitively forever. That's... And any competitive um, game or anything that's that's good for uh, competition is going to be exactly like that. There's no, as far as I know, best football player or football player, uh, European and American, or um, you know, hockey player. As far as I know, I, I, you know, there's somebody who's ranked number one for a limited amount of time until somebody uh, overtakes them. That's usually how things go. But as far as this game goes, this game is constantly evolving and changing with new things that people are always coming up with. And I'm gonna not so much illustrate that, uh, because that's... Uh, uh, you need to have a, such a good grasp of this game to, to even care about any of that. I just want to show off, uh, basically how somebody... I'm in gold right now, by the way. There's, uh, different leagues in this game, yeah, and, uh, I currently am ranking gold. Most people are in... Diamond, I believe, platinum or diamond. So I'm actually below average. So right now, at the uh, to start off, I'm going to be doing a just a game against a medium AI, which I beat uh, elite AI for the first time ever yesterday. I was thrilled. It was fantastic. Um, but I'm just going to be doing against a medium a medium AI and showing what this game looks like if uh, like an, if you, you play it the way you would expect to play a normal game. And then I'm going to do another game against an actual person and show the way that you need to play in order to be below average, okay? And as, as we go through this first game, I'll be explaining some of the uh, concepts and things so that, you know, uh, you're not completely lost in it. And then the second one is literally just going to be showing off how, how intensely <laughs> skilled you have to, you can become at this game and still not really stand a chance like me and we're in okay I already recorded this now twice the first time I forgot to turn my microphone no the first time uh, I made the terrible mistake of, of without trying to brag playing too well better th I wanted this to be uh, to like showcase the way you would normally play this game if you were brand new at it first time I did it, I used the keyboard. I used hotkeys, and I remember, after watching somebody else play, that when I started playing StarCraft, I never used the keyboard. So I'm going to try this again. Second time I recorded it, I forgot to turn the microphone on, so this is the third and final time because I've got my microphone on. And, um... Okay, so let's get into it. This is StarCraft. It is a fantastic game. You start out with uh, this building, your town center. It's either... For Protoss, which is this race, there's uh, the Nexus for Terran. They have a command center, which you'll see, and for Zerg, they have a hatchery, which you'll see a little bit later when I when I showcase the best game, which is not the best game. It's I'm still Gold League, by the way. So, um, okay, start out with this base and six workers, and you just build up from there. And the point, of course, is to wipe your enemy off the map. See these resources? See all these? These are all mine. And this guy over here, he needs to get off this map and let me take all of them. Okay, I'm missing probes. So probes are your basic worker unit. You need them to mine resources. You also need them to build structures like the pylon. Pylon, uh, you could make a gateway, but as you can see, I can't put it anywhere because it needs to be within the radius of a pylon, that glowing blue area. That's the only place I can build most buildings. The only exception to that is an assimilator. I can put that on these and nowhere else. They don't need a pylon though. So I'll go ahead and put one there for fun. And we'll send him to go mine again. And now I can build a probe. Oh, but it's not building. Why? Well, I needed this and now it's building. The pylon gives you supply. When you start out, you start out with 10 supply given to you by your nexus. Um, but if you build more than 10, or if you build 10 probes, you can no longer build anything else without this pylon. It gives you another 8 supply for each pylon. So the function of a pylon is twofold. One, to allow you to build uni uh, structures. Actually, threefold. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, it's 
structures, it gives you supply, and it allows you to warp in units, but more about that in a little bit. Right now I just want to focus on how you would play this game if you were brand new to it and you, you just wanted to have a little fun with it. So okay, build more probes, that's always important, and there's this ability here called Chrono Boost, which builds things 50% faster. Um, I'll wait till this probe finishes, otherwise it might be tough to see it. Alright. 50% faster. See how quick this bar is moving? It'll now move quickly in 3, 2, there it goes. Look how much faster. Now that is actually really useful for probes. You get your probes out a lot faster, which means your economy gets built faster. Uh, this is done. I can go ahead and, oops, I need 3, not 2. Go ahead. Okay, this is done. I'm going to make a zealot. This is my first warrior unit, and now that this is done, I now uh, am able to build a cybernetics core. I would not have been able to build this without the gateway. And as I can see, I can't build any more probes. I'm supply blocked, so I gotta build a pylon. I'm already at the five minute mark. I don't even have a zealot yet. I might lose to the medium AI, as said. Um, I'm gonna get another gateway because I just see disaster in my future. Get another zealot. I'm supply blocked. Get over here. Let's build another assimilator. And there we go. Kroner boost the zealot or the uh, thing there. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the rally point down here. Rally point just means when they spawn, they immediately go here. Okay, that's quite a useful thing. Okay, now that this is done, I can now research warp gate using 50 minerals and 50 gas. Uh, minerals, your most basic. Um, resource think of like gold in most other games right it's it's the one you need the most of and it's the most common one right this here is is called vespine gas it's the second type of resource and it allows for more high tech sort of stuff like the stalker or the sentry let's go ahead and get a stalker because they shoot and let's get another stalker and this thing is researching but, it's not researching fast enough for my taste, so I'm gonna Crota boost it. I'm not even using the keyboard. And these little buttons here, E, M, if I push E, I'm not gonna touch it. E builds a probe, those are hotkeys. But, most new people do not use the hotkeys because it's it's just a brand new, it's a, it's a weird concept, you know? It's not something that comes naturally to most people. After lots of practice, it'll come naturally. Um, okay, so now I've got a few good units here, and hopefully we'll be able to hold off an attack. I don't know if we will. And I can also build this unit called a Mothership Core, um, which is, is some pretty good abilities. Um, now, if you're brand new to this game, you're probably not going to be using a whole lot of abilities, because they... It's hard to use abilities without the hotkeys, so... Get another pylon, because I'm at 33 out of 34. That I literally just did intuitively. I just, I had these building, I'm constantly building probes. I just knew I needed another. I didn't even look at this. Um, but I noticed it when I built it. I'm at 33 out of 34. So indeed I'll need another pylon. And this is going to get supply block pretty quickly. I'm going to build another one. That's done. Okay, I'm actually going to cancel both of these and show you what a warp gate is. So now they're transforming into the warp gate, the research that just finished from here. I built this without even thinking about it. I didn't even realize I built this. Um, okay, well, this is the forge. This allows me to get upgrades for my units. So if I click on a zealot, his attack is 8. His armor is 1. A stalker's attack is 10. And his armor is 1. I'm going to get the armor upgrade, and I'm also going to chrono boost it to get it out a little faster. And now I've got my warp gates. How do you build a unit out of a warp gate? Like so. Boom. That is super nice. They build within five seconds and then they just have to recharge before you can use them again. However, that comes to the third function of this. You can warp in units anywhere within this blue radius, which means if I take a probe and I send him oh, over here and I build a pylon, then I can warp in guys much more closely to his base. And he can't do anything about it. I'm gonna warp, I'm gonna chrono boost that a little bit more, and I need another pylon. I'm expecting that one to get taken out. And I'm only at 14 out of 24 probes. I should have an expansion that's 
got 14 out of 24 and this has 24 out of 24 on it but uh, I'm not doing this to be super good right now you'll see what playing well ish I mean I don't know. to people who play Starcraft it won't be playing well I'm gonna get this now but to people who don't play Starcraft it'll be good enough um, You'll see what that looks like later on. So, not using the keyboard whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and build more gateways because I like getting units, but I'm not getting enough of them. I'm going to stick with four warp gates. And that will do. Now my pylon is done. So, there's one thing I can do. Move these guys down here. Covert Ops. And I can actually... There's an ability. If a probe is holding minerals or gas, you can click this button here, return cargo, boom. He immediately goes off, returns the minerals here, and continues mining. Speaking of mining, I'm gonna do something that I literally didn't even know you could do when I played StarCraft 1 until I watched some pro matches for the first time. I'm gonna expand. I didn't know that you could build new bases. I don't know why that's that's like the point of the game, but for some reason I, I just didn't know. I don't want these here actually. I want them up here. There's one, and there's two. And return cargo, there it is. I saw it pop up on the mini-map here. <clears throat> These are done, so let's make them into warp gates. And we'll chrono boost that out. Okay, now, his attack is now nine. Now that's important, because if I've got one, two, three, four, five stalkers, that's an extra five damage per shot that I'm doing on each thing, right? So if I focus them all on, on that, instead of taking uh, 10 times 50 damage, I'll take 55 damage, which could be the difference. Alright, now we're going to get into some higher tier stuff. Not that we need to, but it's good to show off. We'll get a Twilight Council, our first advanced structure. There's two kinds of structures. There's basic structures, which you the only one that's locked is the cybernetics core, which you just need a gateway for. And then there's advanced structures, all of which are locked until you get the cybernetics core. That's called the tech tree. We will queue up some probes here. I always forgot. People always queue up probes when they're new, because then you don't have to worry about constantly building them. Oh, and it looks like I'm going to die, so I'm going to use the mothership's ability recall. Boom. And we're gonna get out of there, teleport home. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and make some more probes. This is done, I'm gonna get this research, and I'm gonna warp in some more stalkers. Boom. Oh my god, that feels so weird to do that. Keep chrono boosting. Okay, so he had a lot of dudes, because I've been sort of farting around all the way, all day, nothing. Okay, and now I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold this off. I think I should be able to. If I warp in some more guys, I should be able to hold this here. Yeah, this should be fine. Go, my pretties, go! And let's focus on one thing at a time now. Get that extra damage in there where it counts. And get this guy. Come on, get him. Get him. Go on. Oh, look, he boosted away. Ah. Oh. Alright, all well, this raven doesn't stand a chance. I'm gonna get him. This raven don't stand a chance. Alright. So I've basically shown off the mechanics. This thing here, by the way, is Twilight Council. It doesn't give me any new units, but it does allow me to upgrade the Zealot and the Stalker with new abilities. The Zealot will get charge. You'll see that momentarily. Um, I'll make some more so it becomes a little more apparent. Charge is really good because it allows the Zealot to charge into battle more quickly, which means he can get up to his enemy faster while taking less damage. My Mothership Core died, I didn't realize. Go ahead and send it down there. Uh, I got 25 out of 24 probes. One probe has nothing to do. He, had to, he doesn't have a job. That's 24 is the maximum amount of probes that this mineral patch can support. That's done. We'll make another assimilator. And I can make more of these guys. Make more zealots because zealots are pretty freaking awesome with their charge ability. <coughs> Okay, charge is done. I'm gonna research Blink. I'm getting ground weapon too. There are three upgrades. Not that that really you need to know that much, but uh, 
um, basically I'm just gonna build up a big army and go kill him at this point. I'm going to show off that charge ability. Um, but generally, this is how you can expect to play if you're brand new at the game. And you'll see why I show this off in the next game immediately. You'll see a big difference. Um, and this is just to show off the skill ceiling, just to show off how 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 much you can uh, progress in how well you play the game. Oops, I'm not supposed to use the keyboard. Okay. Keep making them. Alright, I think I'll do one more round of warp ins and. Oh, I gotta make more pylons. Oh, here they come. <clears throat> I'll do some more stalkers. You'll see those zealots warp charge in. And stalkers have an ability called blink. Oh, chrono boost. I don't know if you'll get to see it in this one, but you certainly will be able to in later games. But right now, I'm. I think we basically got the basics of how this goes, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here by killing the AI! Yay! Alright, there's this ability called attack move. So if I push attack, I can push attack, click on the ground, and now they'll attack anything on their way. Anything that they see... Uh, actually, I'm gonna attack move into this base here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's throw a time warp down. And attack move. And there's that charge, you can see it. That allows him to close that gap much more quickly. And I'll go to boost. Now, usually, you would not take your attention off of the battle because it is a glorious sight. Alright, let's attack move into here. And let's warp in some more guys while they're moving. Boom, boom. I'll get two more zealots here. And attack move. Alright, these stalkers are blocking the way, the zealots can't get in. Alright, here's Blink. The Blink allows you to do this. Kill it. Woo! Just before my mothership core died. <coughs> oh, it died. Alright, let's have them attack move into here. And my pylon died, I didn't even notice it. Attack move in, and my stalkers can go ahead and blink up here. Attack move. And you can see just how useful that charge is. These zealots they can do a lot of damage if they get in there quick enough. Let's target that down. Oh, alright. Good, good, good. This should pretty much be enough to kill everything here. Now this is against the medium AI. Um, you, if, if you're gonna start playing this game, I recommend going against the easy AI just so you can get a feel for because I already know what a stalker is. I already know what the tech tree is. I already know what I want to build. That's an advantage you're not gonna have when you start playing this game. So it's important to keep that in mind and that's mainly the reason you want to start on easy is because you don't know what most stuff does. You don't know what you want to do. I happen to know what I want to do already because I've played this game so much. Um, Alright, blink in. And attack move in. And we're basically gonna just wait for him to say GG and surrender to us. And here, let's get these SCVs. They're repairing, but it's not cool. And kill him. He should, he should surrender soon enough. I'll send in a few more zealots, I guess. Um, okay. Alright, it's at this point that I stop caring. <laughs> About, uh... Okay, there we go, he surrenders. GG. Alright, so that is the basics. That is what you'll start off playing like. You're not gonna use the keyboard a whole lot. Um, and that's, that's just to show you uh, how differently this game can be played. From the bottom level to the top, I guess. So... In the next game, you'll definitely see that happen. I've already recorded it. So, um, thank you for watching, and see you in the next game. Bye-bye. And somebody put it... Oh, God, that's awful. Somebody somebody had a, uh, put this game... Up. How am I trying to say this? Somebody described this game beautifully by saying, okay, that it's asymmetrically balanced, which means 
every single thing in this game has a different role to play. Every faction, every unit, except for the workers, I guess. Uh, every single thing in this game does something completely different from everything else. Which means that it's asymmetrical, right? Asymmetric, nothing is, 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 uh... Not parallel, but... Um, oh god, I'm not doing a good job here. No, that's gonna leave a gap. There we go. Build it? Yeah. Alright, get back to work. Nothing is, uh, oh, good luck, have fun. Okay, nothing is, is even, right? Nothing is exactly the same. It's asymmetric, but they've worked on it so hard uh, to make sure it's balanced. Make it means nothing is overpowered, nothing is underpowered, nothing is too strong or too weak. Um, in the right hands, you know, of course, there are, in, in unskilled hands, certainly there are going to be things that are way stronger, but um, the game has that skill ceiling where if you know what you're doing, you can overcome a lot of that stuff that lower level people, oh god, I'm not building, okay, that lower level people will have trouble with, so asymmetrically balanced, that's like my new favorite phrase, oop, don't do that. Uh, we are at 13. I have not built my gateway. I've already lost this game. I guarantee you because I'm I've been going slow Okay, now this right here as you'll see what I'm doing with my mouse and um, My you know pushing three hammer down on that three button This is the equivalent to a baseball player Throwing a ball into a net before he goes out onto the field. This is just to get warmed up This is this is literally how fast you need to play. Oh shoot. Oh God see now I'm like nervous here um, I, I guarantee you've already thrown this game away with, with that very, very beginning, um, with how I was not playing too well. Oops, that's too much. Get him! Get him! Get him! I don't know why, I just, that's just what you do when a worker enters your base. Keep in mind, this is an actual person. His name is Unfair Child. I don't have enough people in gas. There we go, that's it. BY, put that down. And if I was, if I was, uh, I mean, as you saw, get this, sell it out here. If I was, um, smart, <laughs> about, if I wanted to do well in this game, and I don't care about doing well, even though it is a ladder match and it will affect my ranking in the ladder, I don't care too much about that because I know how good I am when I'm not talking in a microphone. Um, we need another, oh shoot, come on, click on the things, I am not used to this mouse. That's another thing, you've got to be very, very, um, familiar with the, your keyboard and your mouse. Those are the tools that you use to get the job done. Get back here. You, he, I guarantee you he's gonna go home. He's not gonna wanna stick around. So another zealot, please. And gate. Thank you. Oh my god, I'm playing so slowly. I know it doesn't look like it, but I know I am. Uh, what can I do? More gateways, I'm thinking. And control C, or not control C, shift C to tell him to go back and mine those minerals. Boom. Get them into the gas. Gas is important. Uh, later on it's important. Right now, I just really need zealots a sentry, maybe. Uh-oh. Oh, I did not foresee this. Okay, here's where Micro comes in. Here's where Micro. Okay, look. He's got a very fast, uh, very mobile unit. Actually, it's- I don't want that. I want a Mothership Core. A movement Mothership Core is gonna shoot, and he's just gonna kite this zealot forever. Boom. Ugh, so close. It's really hard to hit these guys. Get it? Yeah, see, so, and you, on top of this, you can't forget uh, to be building workers, to be getting pylons. I'm all, oh, I'm blocked. And I think that's pretty much going to do it for him. He sees that mothership core and he's going to get out of there because my mothership core... Reapers can't shoot up, so they can't do any damage to my Mothership Core, which is this thing here. But my Mothership Core can do as much damage as it, is, it wants as long as the Reaper stays in range. And now I've got a Stalker out. Stalkers are... Uh, they can shoot farther than a, than a Reaper can. Which means that they, they basically outclass the Reapers, is what it comes down to. Now I'm gonna get this, because I know that Terran like to zoom their dropships in and drop in my base, so... Get that. Um, if I was smart, I'd expand, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Because expanding takes a lot of money, and that's money that I could be using for units, for cannons, for upgrades. Um, but the problem though is if I'd spend too much money on my units and my upgrades and all that. Oh god, Chrono Boost, come on. Um, 
then I won't have enough money to expand, right? So th it's a very fine balance you've got to strike with this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, it's time to really start <laughs> getting going here. Um, I got my cyber my robotics bay on the way. I don't know if you even saw me build that. It's this thing here. That's control Q. I need to get my observers out. My stalkers need to come over here. Because I know Terran Love drops B for observer. Chrono boost. Uh, cannon B, C. Put it right in here. So that he can't do too much damage. Although that's really... You only need the cannon here for like an oracle. Right now, actually, I'm, it might be worth it to attack to High Templar, so I'm gonna put that down. I build this so that I can get the Templar Archives, uh, which is gonna allow me to get a new kind of unit called the High Templar, which has a bunch of abilities that are very good for killing lots of people. That's all you need to know about it right now. Okay, this is an observer. As you can see, he's glowing blue. It means he's invisible. But that does not mean that the person cannot see him. I forgot to send a scout. Oh, shoot. I completely forgot. Okay, build. Uh, I don't know if I want an immortal. I don't think I do. I'm gonna have him hang out here. And am I building another? Good, good, good. Get weapons. And blink is going to be essential. Blink is that uh, ability that allows your stalkers to teleport short ranges. Um, which is going to be so useful, you don't even realize how, how handy it is to have um, units that can like teleport to where they need to go fairly quickly. Okay, so at this point, I'm not entirely comfortable with spending 400 minerals, it's all of my minerals on another base, but I have to do it right now, otherwise I'm not going to get uh, really another chance. I'm not keeping up on my probes right now. I'm genuinely not playing well. Genuinely, I'm. Um, e. Oh god. <laughs> I can just feel myself losing right now. I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, let's put him right here where we're going to get the most sight out of this guy. It's important to position these guys perfectly, absolutely perfectly. The reason being, I'm gonna want to know when they're coming, right? So, get more stalkers, ever more. Always more stalkers. Uh, okay, this is still this, this needs to go here. Um, Chrono boost more of these guys. My mothership core is necessary is is really necessary um because it's got this ability called photon overcharge basically turns the nexus right here into a giant cannon that does a lot of damage uh, so that's something you need i'm not getting my upgrades ah no i am okay i'm just not chrono boosting them though which is is kind of pivotal actually because um if you got the ability to to get ahead in any way you better use it and i'm not so how do i know i'm not because i know how i'm supposed to play i'm not playing that way right now okay oh, shoot i just canceled some probes okay now i've got 35 out of 24 which means i can take uh, about 11 off so this is 8 9 10 11 should be 24 out of 24 25 out of 24 because one just got built that 25th guy isn't going to do anything for me because one of these mineral patches can only handle okay here we go Alright, that wasn't too bad, but I'm expecting drops at any time now. I gotta keep an eye out. Here they are. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Get them up. Get them up. Get, go, 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 go. I'm ready for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not gonna use my photon overcharge. But I am going to move up and try to find these guys. I know they're here. Where'd they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? Oh my god. Photon overcharge. I didn't want to use it, but they're already going to be doing all the damage, so... Get over there, guys. And... Boom. One goes down. That had people in it, which means he lost a lot of, um... This game... <sighs> when you lose that many units, that's kind of the equivalent to using a lot of money. Um, because you spend a lot of money on those units, and letting them die like that is is not <laughs> economic in any way. Uh, so they've actually they only killed one worker. I'm kind of surprised. Um, gosh, that actually really does work. Let's get charge. Uh, this is about to finish. So get the other one. I'm gonna want immortals now, and I'm gonna want to tech up to my Templar. Although I'm gonna probably want to put it in a slightly weird spot so that he doesn't scan it. Terran have the ability. To just scan, make a big circle on the screen. He can see everything in that circle, and there's no units involved, so I can't shoot it. Um, 
I'm not playing well. I know I'm not. Because if I were to uh, move out now... Oh, here they come. Here they come. But they're not going to do anything. He just... Okay, that's just literally there to... Kill that. Move this guy back. Okay, good. Micro, baby. There it is. More zealots. Every more. Okay. More pylons. Oh, jeez, you're right. Ah, I haven't been paying attention. That's not a good spot for my pylon. Oh, shoot. I'm out of, like... Alright, here, C. Here, push C. Okay. I need more stalkers. I need storm. I need that. That's getting finished. Are my... Yes. Okay, so here's the blink ability. There it is. You can blink so far, which is really useful if they're being, um... You can blink them back, uh, and immediately they're out of harm's way. Allowing these zealots, perhaps, uh, with the charge ability about to finish. That was actually a wasted chrono boost right there. I need another immortal. I should never, never, ever, 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 um, hit that. I hit QI. That's what I need to do. Okay. So, I'm gonna get up a couple more cannons, just to kind of thwart. And actually, this guy is not in a good spot. I need to be able to spot these medevacs much faster, which is what he's using to drop this stuff. Uh, you go there. I need another expansion. Why? Because this is running out of minerals quite quickly, and this one has too many workers, so... Really need that. I'm not attacking at all because I don't have enough units. I know I don't have enough units because... Enough... Enough of this game will just... You'll just get that intuition, I guess. I know... Oh god, I can just... I know I'm gonna lose this game, and it could partially be to uh, my lack of <laughs> doing anything in the very beginning while I was talking about all that. Um, oh God, I'm not doing well. I can feel it. Okay, just to show you, I'm basically gonna go kill myself now. Uh, just to show you, I don't know if this was <laughs> at all impressive. You probably don't know half the things that are going on right now. Right now I'm building more probes, as you can see. Chrono boost. I do not need to be building more probes. I've already got too many. Okay, this is bad. He's got a planetary fortress. Those are experts in killing your people. And ooh, ooh uh, time warp, time warp. All right, move in. Okay, good force fields that blocks them. Okay, yeah, he's got way more than me. So, Templar, these guys are the bomb. The bomb diggity. Okay, get out of that. And that's almost done, which means I can start actually tasking them there. And I can pretty much take all these guys. Boom. And look. Bam. They're on their way. Good, 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 good. Now, on top of all this, um, I can get more structures that make units because I can afford it at this point. Tell them to go mine. I don't remember building this, but it's going to be really useful. So, uh, I'm going to put in... Four zealots. Boom. Get in there, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Where are you going? Not you. Not you. Go mine. Hold shift and click a lot to deselect stuff. Okay. So far, no more drops. He seems to have given up on the drops, which is really going to work in my favor, believe it or not. I don't want these guys. Okay, good, good, good. I'll make you number four. Keep an eye on this guy. Uh, he shouldn't see this coming, which is going to be really useful for me. Let's get this and move this guy in. Time warp. Storm, 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 storm. Storms. Uh, oh, I. Okay, drop, 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 drop. <laughs> Okay, I've, my, okay, he's gonna come kill me now. My army is melted. But, okay, uh, that's not gonna do anything. It's dead. All the zealots are gone. A useless attack. Uh, now I'm going to lose. I push GG, and I'll just let you watch me kill him. But GG, by the way, means I concede, you win, you were the better player. Good game. That's what it means, GG. And he says GG back, because that's the polite thing to do. Um... Well, <laughs> oops, I tried to push caps lock and delete and enter. Oh, this game makes you so flustered. Oh, I totally forgot about these. Probably didn't even see those more upgrades because why not? <laughs> I'll beat them with my one immortal. Go! 
to battle. Yep, that's what they do. Stim, they have an ability called Stim right there. It uh, speeds up their movement and attack, I think, by two. Not two, but it makes them twice as fast at shooting, which means they do basically effectively do double damage at the cost of ten health. However, this medevac uh, heals them at like a million health a second, I swear to God. So they can stim, take that ten health, hit, but attack twice as fast, do double damage, and get healed up. And while they're taking damage, get healed up. So, um, I don't know if I would have won this if I were not talking about the game, and I guarantee you I was not playing as well as I certainly normally do at all, like not even close. And if we watch the replay, my APM is, is, is going to be very sad looking. It's going to be way, probably below 100, and my average APM, by the way, is actions per minute. If I click on this probe, tell him to go over here. That right there is two actions. Click is one, go is two, yeah? Um, click is one, go is two, that's two actions. And my normal sort of actions per minute is about 120 actions, orders per minute. So if I were to, okay, I'm gonna quit now. Watch the replay. Uh, you'd see that my APM was significantly lower than in more games. Uh, but genuine, generally that's the way it's played. Um, I'm gonna try one more game. And I'm not gonna talk. And I'm gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna pretend that I'm not even showcasing anything. And I'm gonna try to play my little heart out. As, as, uh, <laughs> my below average heart. And see how I get, how far I get. But that's the basics, I guess. And in order to really understand what makes this game so incredible, you need to understand more than the basics. It's intense. Okay, I'm gonna switch my mic off and just play and see if I do any better. Against a Zerg, I'm gonna want... I know what kind of units I'm gonna want. Um, I'm gonna know what kind of buildings I wanna put where, which kind of... where my cannons need to go, how much I need to expand, or when I need to expand. I know all the... Oops, sorry. I know everything I need to know just because he's Zerg, uh, what I need to do. So let's see how it goes. Okay, and we're in. Um, this is a uh, recording of a game that I did while I wasn't talking, just to try to show you how um, how much better <laughs> you can play when you're not talking into a microphone. Right now, I'm just setting up those, the hotkeys that save your space for your bases so that you can basically get around the map a little bit quicker. <clears throat> and at 9 Supply, I build my pylon every single time. And this right here that you see me doing with the mouse, it drives my sister absolutely bonkers when I do stuff like this. Um, and there's a force base right there. Um, that is basically, I, I've already explained it, it's to warm up your hands, it's the essential, it's the, um, not the essential, the uh, equivalent to a baseball player pitching a ball into a net before going on the field. It's just to warm up and get ready to be able to play real, real fast which you're actually going to be able to see me do in this game. I recorded a few other games without playing real, real fast. Well, somewhat fast, but not as fast as I would like to have been. So I actually had to record over and over again. Um, and uh, yeah, that kind of was weird, but I finally got the perfect game. One that has plenty of back and forth action. Uh, one that... Um, uh, shows me being faster shows just how different this game can look when you get better at it by the way um, Because the so far you've only seen me play that one game where I got crushed and then the game where I played uh, Like a literal noob So this is what I, I wanted to show off My best my best skills at this game which remember are below average. I'm still only in gold. I'm not diamond or platinum so I'm gonna be and taking that into account, you know. So here I'm sending my scout into the base, microing my scout and macroing back at home. I see a spawning pool and a hatchery, um, but no gas taken, so I know he's probably not going to be going roaches, so I don't need to worry too much about that. But it, of course, doesn't occur to me at the time that he's going to not be doing roaches, so I'm going to be building... Um, actually, I don't even prepare for roaches, but I accidentally do the correct thing there. And I build a zealot and put it right there so that... 
Uh, I can tell him to hold position and he doesn't uh, allow anything through. A zealot on hold position means stay right there, do not move. Normally if you have them on, you know, normal stand around command, if they see a unit, they'll just dart straight for it. And with proper micro, you can pull your unit back, go around the zealot and get into the base. But if I have them on hold position, you can't get into the base, which is quite, quite the useful thing. And I'm just checking to make sure my graphics are on high. I want the best frame rate possible, and they are. There we go, there's the hold position. I don't know if you saw it, but there it was. I just push H to do that, and I'm going to get my second assimilator up because I'm going to want to build plenty, plenty of stalkers. Um, because I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm certainly not expecting what he does in this game. I've seen this game by the way I've played it, so... Spoilers abound, I guess. <clears throat> um, okay, so now I'm, I'm getting another gateway, getting another pylon, because I'm going to be supply blocked very soon with this constant production of probes and uh, another stalker on the way after the next one is finished. I'm sure I've got warp gate researching, but I didn't see it. Just checking to make sure my hotkeys for my uh, base locations are, are all set up, making sure that I can get around the map as quickly as I need to. That's the second gateway. I'm going to want to start making stuff out of that as soon as possible. Oh, I didn't build the stalker. I built a sentry. There's the stalker there. Um, okay, now I only meant to put two into that second geyser. I meant to have three in the other one because uh, one worker mines at a rate of 40 minerals per second and at this point I need as many minerals as I can get. I don't need a ton of gas right now. I'm not super high tech. Gas is really for the higher tier stuff. So I only meant to have, you know, <laughs> three and two, but I accidentally did two and two, which worked out fine anyway. I, I was never really gas starved at this point. Um, as far as I know, it's still minerals, so... I could probably actually just stay on one gas at this point, which is good to know. But, you know, whatever, all sorts of things happening. That second gateway, uh, third actually, third finishing, the fourth one has gone down already, I forgot to mention, but whatever. Uh, getting my Mothership Core out right now. Mothership Core has a slew of abilities that are very, very useful. Uh, warp Gate's done, I'm gonna start turning these into Warp Gates as soon as the units finish up. Get another pylon, because I'm at 44 out of 58, which you wouldn't think is a lot, but... Uh, now it's at 47 out of 58, and now it's at 47? 44, yeah, okay. Because the Mothership Core and the Zealot finished at the same time. Um, here's another Zealot, and now I've got a decent amount of units at the 7 minute mark. Now if you remember, I think it took me around 10 minutes, 14 minutes for this expansion in the, in the noob game that I did. And I didn't have near this many units at even the 10 minute mark, I don't think. Um, so this is this is where speed really comes in. You can really get a lot more done. The more quickly you can place your buildings, the more quickly you can make probes. As even though they're they're on a, a timer, there's only so quickly you can make them. But the more quickly um, you're able to get probes building, you know, the more quickly you hit that button to, to build a probe. Just all these little things, these little tiny time savers, they add up. And that right there is a hallucinated phoenix. I tried to explain it in my cast because I just did the cast. But I don't think it worked out too well, so I'll explain it now. That right there, that that flying buzzard looking thing that you saw, vapor, vapor uh, phase in out of nowhere. That is a hallucinated phoenix. Um, the phoenix is a real unit, but that one is not. It's only a hallucination. And to a zerg who doesn't have any detecting units, anything that can detect cloaked or burrowed or hallucinated uni uh, units, um, it's gonna look like a real phoenix to them, and that is important for gameplay reasons, which I explain in the cast. Um, so my, my expansion is now finishing up. I'm gonna want to transfer a bunch of workers. I get the Twilight Council down because it's got some upgrades, and it allows for higher tech units like High Templar, Dark Templar, things that are gonna be really useful. I still haven't seen anything with that phoenix. I, I didn't, you know, I saw the expansion and I saw the spawning pool same stuff I already knew about, so not going to be getting a lot of information from that. Um, but if you got enough minerals, or uh, enough units, you don't need a whole lot of information, you know. Um, so eventually, I mean, pretty shortly, I'm going to make another Phoenix to scout out where his third expansion should be, uh, and his fourth, to see if he's taken any more bases. And researching charge is going to help greatly in this. Um, I got 24 out of 24 on there. That's the ideal amount that you need. My gases are all mining, uh, but right now I'm just mineral starved, so I gotta keep making probes like crazy, uh, as well as making as many units as I can, because I don't want the, the, the Zerg to just run into my base and I have nothing to fight them with, so it's, it's tough. You gotta 
spend your money as quickly as you can and make it as quickly as you can. So, I mean, it's it. Okay, here's that other phoenix. It's blue. It's a hallucination. It's not real. Um, it doesn't do any damage when it attacks, but if the Zerg doesn't have detection, it looks like a real unit. And notice, I just clicked on the minimap. I'm not following that phoenix around to see what it's doing because I've got stuff to do back at home. I'm building these two forges. I'm going to chrono boost that zealot leg speed soon enough. And on the minimap, you can see my phoenix has discovered their third base here. And I'm going to try to get into the main and see what they got. And I don't actually look at it, but on the minimap you can see another blue dot showed up. That's their infestation pit, which um, is only going to tell me that they're going for hive tech. So I'm expecting maybe ultralisks, or I'm not really sure what they could be doing with an infestation pit this early on. So I'm going to push out and try to harass that third base there because um, I didn't see too many units being uh, being made. I didn't see, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of units on my phoenix flew over so i think i can do pretty decent amount of damage to this and there go some force fields and those down there are locusts so now i know the cat's out of the bag he's building swarm hosts uh which is which is actually critical information for me the hatchery goes down gonna deny that base and i'm gonna go ahead and warp home and take as little damage as possible resupply my army and I saw those locusts. Now those are important to know because that means, oh, this guy up here, gonna kill this. I don't remember building that zealot. That zealot is a changeling. That is spawned by the zerg. Um, they, uh, when the changeling, see, you can kill it there. When the changeling uh, drops down out of an overseer, when he meets either a Terran, a zerg, or Protoss, he morphs himself into um, the, the most basic unit. So a zergling for zerg, Protoss, a zealot for Protoss, or a marine for the Terran, um, and it's it's sort of like Zerg espionage, really. It's you know it's sort of like a spy getting into your base and seeing what tech you've got, what kind of units you're building, and if you if you are unaware that there's a changeling there, they can actually get a lot of information. But if that changeling was in a weird spot. I don't remember. I don't I don't ever have any reason to build a zealot there and just leave it. Um, okay, so I saw swarm hosts. Swarm hosts are really interesting. They burrow into the ground and then they pop out of their backs two little creatures called locusts which do a decent amount of damage but their um, their um, strength really lies in the amount of locusts that you can get out of the swarm host it's a two to one ratio so if you've got 12 swarm hosts you're gonna get 24 locusts but the real kicker for the locusts is that they are completely free all you gotta do is build swarm hosts and they will um, on a timer every once in a while pop out more locusts usually about the time the locusts die so I'm gonna get my robotics facility in order to get an observer which can detect burrowed um, uh, swarm hosts because that's how the swarm hosts work they burrow into the ground and then they pop locusts out of their back there's the observer right there um, and that's that's mainly only gonna be for detection I just use phoenixes to scout out his bases but I'm pretty sure he's taken his third base and we got some zerglings I don't know if you saw it but the army is already on the way as soon as that base was under attack I immediately hit one a click two a click on the minimap and they were down there before the guy even said finished his thought before it even said attack they were on their way which which is just again trying to show off uh, the amount of skill that you can you can get in this game and how much it actually can matter and right here I kind of mess up on the upgrades a little bit I put two on one I want two on two there it is and now they'll research evenly these warp gates are done very useful um, I'm gonna be able to build a lot more units with that and I'm gonna try to make more gateways because I'll need them but this is blocking it off there we go and a couple of cannons for defense you gotta get cannons um, I mean, you don't have to, but they are helpful. They give the Zerg something to, to attack instead of your workers. And just a few more gateways, and I position them just like that to allow the smallest way possible through. Um, because that makes it a lot easier to block it off, and then the Zerg can't get into the base and kill all your workers. So, now I'm going to be moving out, and if you can see on the minimap, there's a lot of that purple stuff. There's all this gray, nasty stuff. That is spread by the Zerg. That is called Creep, and it's very, very, very useful for the Zerg. Their units move faster on it, and um, they can see they use Creep Tumors to spawn the Creep. There they are right there. They can see everything that the Creep Tumors can see. So when my army entered onto the Creep, they knew exactly where I was. 
Um, okay, so now I'm going to be fighting off these locusts. Remember, these are the free units, and i got to get this observer up to find the swarm hosts, wherever they may be. There they are. There's one. He's out of position completely. He gets taken out. And back home, i got to warp in more stuff. Okay, yes, I know that there's a battle. Okay, here we go. And I see the swarm hosts, but these locusts are getting in the way, and he's actually getting a lot of kills absolutely for free off the back of these swarm hosts, because those are free units, and my units are not free. So, but uh, a little bit of targeting goes down, and we're going to be able to clean those swarm hosts up pretty easily. Um, but now I can see down below, I'm being attacked. Below, I'm flanked. And actually, I've lost a huge amount just, just because of that flank right there. So I'm going to pull back. I once again used the minimap and clicked on the minimap at the same time to both move my units back and look at the place that I wanted to look at. And then I resupplied. My warp gates are now coming up. Uh, the gateways are finished, so I turn them into warp gates to get even more units. You gotta get them. Um, and I'm just, I mean, this is just the speed you gotta play at the whole game if you... If, you know, well, I mean, you don't have to, but I certainly have a good time doing it like this. This is a lot of fun for me. And that zealot dies at the watchtower. That's fine, he's just a zealot. Um, okay, now, I'm gonna be coming over to this expansion, because I am expecting to see a, a base right there. Right where I'm attacking, on the minimap. Um, so, I'm gonna be seeing if he's got a base there. I don't know for sure, but it's you can use your army to scout that out. It's fine. So, you know, you don't have to send a phoenix every time. It's just a, a sort of cheaper way of doing it, but... Seeing as how I'm pretty confident he put a base here, I'll just go attack it. And I've got Mutalisks in my base. Mutalisks are bad news. I'll explain more about them in the cast that I'm going to do after this. And I warp home pretty handily uh, just using the minimap. I didn't even have to look at my units to warp in. I just push 2R and click on the Nexus. And uh, going to be able to take these Mutalisks out. The Zealots are going to tie up the Zerglings. And I warp in mute, uh, some more stalkers behind the mutalisks, but my front, my front is being attacked now by these swarm hosts. They are besieging my front, uh, my uh, my front door here, and I've got to go deal with them. I don't even know if I have an observer around the area, so I think I actually started an observer right there. I didn't even see it, but I'm pretty certain I started an observer because I know when it shows up. And these mutalisks gonna basically die, but the real danger is, of course, in these locusts. I can't see where they're coming from. I can't see those swarm hosts. But I've got enough money that I can basically warp in uh, more army, you know, instantly. And there's the observer coming in. I can see these swarm hosts now, and I can target them down. And that's actually a lot of money lost for each swarm host. It's uh, 200 minerals, 100 gas per swarm host. So if you were to look at the units lost tab, which I do in the cast because I've done the cast already, there are about 4,000 more resources in the hole than I am for uh, units created. And now that I've killed off all these swarm hosts, I know that it's going to be a little while before he can get more units up, so I, I decide now is the time I have to attack. I get observer speed there because I, I really want my observers to be able to, to keep up with my stalkers, because if my stalkers move out ahead of my observers, they're going to be fighting a bunch of locusts, and then they're not going to see the swarm hosts until my observer finally gets there. I'm not even looking at the battle right now. I'm, I'm going to be building more stuff at my base. There's the battle. And this is pretty much going to do it for the Zerg buddy. Um, and he kind of insults me by saying he sucks. It's sort of an Asian way of insulting. And I win the game. And that's it. Okay, here we are. We're in the game. And as an added bonus, everybody is out of the house. Happy, happy, happy. Okay, why is that? Uh, I've been super reluctant to say anything because I've had people in the house who could hear me and that's super freaking awkward to be doing this incredibly nerdy thing with people who are not nerds. Well, at least my mom's not. That's okay, I'll move out soon. Um, <laughs> I currently fit the, the description of uh, the person who like is a nerd and stays at home and that's not actually a description but there is like the 40 year old guy. Anyway, I'm not 40, it's okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about Zerg Anatomy while this game gets going. Most of the time, casters will talk about the player's history, how they're doing in the tournaments, how many tournaments they've won up until now, and uh, how even they think the matchup is and stuff like that. I don't know any of that. I don't know a single thing about Subtle Tree. Okay, good luck, have fun. And then, of course, good luck, have fun. 
So instead, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Zerg, because this is the first time you're seeing them, assuming you're the audience that I'm catering to. Okay. Um, Zerg are are completely unique, um, about as unique as the other two factions are. Uh, the first thing that makes them unique is that all of their structures are meat-based. They are all biological, okay? Now, the mechanic for building buildings is essentially the same. You use your worker to go and build the building. The main difference here, though, is that uh, when a worker builds a building, Boom, he turns into the building. Now that's important for uh, one major gameplay reason. If I go into the units tab, you can see, I'm about to pull ahead here, and he'll build a spawning pool relatively soon. It'll have an impact on gameplay. He's one drone behind right now, uh, one worker behind. I got 15 probes, he's got 14 drones. Now he's got, I'm 16 to 14 here. Um, because it's, uh, you have to sacrifice that worker in order to make a building, and each worker mines at a rate of 40 minerals per minute. So that's, that's, uh, 80 minerals per minute already that he's gonna be down just by building those two structures. But, we'll see in a moment that they have a, a unit called the Queen, which has, um, an ability that sort of makes up for this early game loss of workers. Um... Next thing I want to talk about is indeed the hatchery. This is the heart of the Zerg base. This is unique to the Zerg. There's not really any other races that have like a most important building. There's the Nexus, of course, which is get what gets you all your money and stuff, but it's not as important to the entire base as the hatchery. Now, why is that? Because these buildings here do not make units. They're only tech upgrades. They are only for upgrades and to unlock new units by building. Okay, so if these buildings don't make units, how the heck do you make your units? This is your hatchery, and on it, your hatchery uh, spawns automatically these little larvae, and a larva will turn into an egg and make every single unit that the Zerg has at its disposal. But it can, at a maximum, have three larvae. And we will... Okay, now here's the queen, and she's used her spawn larva ability. This is this is where it starts to make up for it. She can spawn four more larva, so instead of only being able to make three drones at a time at most, you can now make seven at a time and really pull ahead in workers or units or whatever it is that you want. Um, if you wanted to make the same amount of zealots as they will make, uh, I guess, roaches, you would need uh, seven warp gates. Uh, whereas they only need a queen and a hatchery. That's all they need, and of course, the, the resources to back it up. Alright, there we go. Good. Okay, a couple more Zerg mechanics before the game really gets underway. We can see pretty basic stuff. Three gate, four gate out of the Protoss, and warp gate is on the way. Two gases, two guys in each gas. I meant to only put two guys in this gas anyway. I, I covered that in the last video. Um, which I actually have yet to do, but whatever. Um, okay. What's next? The creep. This nasty, slimy, disgusting stuff that you can see right here. This is called creep, and much like the pylon, uh, Zerg can only build their buildings on creep. Go away. With the exception of the extractor, just like the assimilator, and the hatchery, just like the nexus. You don't need uh, the power supply to be in place to build your buildings. Terran are the only ones who can build anywhere. Terran are the only race who can build their buildings wherever they feel like it. Um, and for the, then the next important reason is that units on creep, uh, are both faster and they heal faster. This is important because, um, if you're going to be fighting on creep, that means you can get your zerglings and surround the enemy that much faster, or you can run away faster, and the zergling with the speed upgrade, which is just now finished, there you can see the wings there, it shows off the speed upgrade are the fastest unit in the game, bar none. There's no faster unit in the game, there will never be a faster unit in the game, because that's what the Zergling is for. It's for its speed, its mobility, but it's only got 35 health and 5 attack, which is pretty measly. So these are the kind of little guys that you want to build in massive, massive swarms, to the point where there's just too many to kill, and they're, they, they sort of give the, um, the look of the Zerg, the swarmy sort of 
alien, overwhelming sort of look, which is completely contrary to the Protoss. Okay, here, <laughs> right there, that is a hallucinated phoenix. We'll see another one in a few minutes. I did that so that I could scout out what he's got, and I see he's got this expansion, which I already saw with my probe, and I see a spawning pool, so not a whole lot to go off of. This is about as standard as it gets for Zerg. I mean, I'm expecting he's got another base somewhere, but I haven't seen it yet, so... But most Zerg, at this point, have this base by now. That's the point of the Zerg, is to expand a lot, make a lot of units, make a lot of creep, to transport your units faster, and, and um, stuff like that. Okay, and the way you get creep, other than planting down hatcheries, are these things here, called creep tumors. This is the Queen's second most important ability, which is spawn a creep tumor. And creep tumors, as you can see, spread the creep, which gives you, uh, you know, more, more areas your units can get to and be in their prime. As well as, if we go to Zerg Vision here, where the creep tumors uh, stop, that's where their vision stops. So they can see everything that the creep tumors can see. So if you get it all along the map here, and Protoss marches in, you're going to be able to see the Protoss way before they see you, if you're the Zerg. Um, okay. I think that's basically it, except for one last thing, um, and it's just sort of one of these other differences that Blizzard's incorporated with each different race. The Protoss have pylons, right? And the pylons contribute to the supply cap. Well, Zerg have overlords, uh, as we can see. Now, overlords are responsible for the supply. They can also morph into overseers, which we'll see soon enough. They're detectors, and they've got a couple abilities. Um, okay, here's that other hallucinated phoenix. Hallucinated phoenix is something that is spawned by a sentry. Uh, it's not a real unit. It's a hallucination. And without detection, it will look like a real phoenix. So, imagine you've got these sentries, and instead of hallucinating a phoenix to go and see this expansion, which I've just scouted out using my phoenix, we spawn in two really big monstrous units, but they're not real. If the Zerg doesn't have detection, he's gonna target on those two big fake free units and the rest of my army is going to be able to do a lot of damage and he's not going to be doing anything to mine because he's focusing on the hallucinations that's one reason to use hallucination um okay so now protoss moving in and okay we've got some swarm hosts here but these force ugh, these force fields going to be able to prevent these locusts from getting in and doing enough damage and we take out the heart of the base the one building that really matters in each base and we get out of there that's going to deny him production, that's going to deny him income. It's a big deal to get your hatcheries destroyed. Uh, okay, so here we have the swarm host. These guys make real free units. They actually do damage. They're not just hallucinations. But they don't have an attack themselves. So what they do is they burrow in the ground, They these pustules on their back explode, and you get these little things called locusts, which do a decent amount of damage. That's uh, seven more damage than a zergling. Uh, but they don't last long. Okay. And then, oh, uh, the overlords. Yes, I was talking about the overlords before that attack came in. I happen to know the lore behind why an overlord is the supply generator for the zerg. Um, because it's fun to know these things, I guess. Um, the reason being that each overlord you make has a certain amount of uh, control over the, the Zerg, right? The overlords help to dictate the Zerg, you know? They've got that psionic mind brainwave thing, and they sort of help to split up the workload <laughs> by the, the mind, uh, the hive mind, right? That's the lore. The only reason I want to tell you the lore is so I can tell you this joke. This right here is basically a corporate meeting. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. Um, and I will be going back to that joke <laughs> every so often when we see overlords. Okay, so fourth base actually going down for Zerg, which is exactly what you want if you're Zerg. You have to have more bases than your opponent if your opponent is anything other than a Zerg. Because, um... Hatcheries are super important. They make units. They're 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 more important than than a nexus or command center, but not by much, I guess, because a nexus has chrono boost, and a command center can drop mules, which mine pretty freaking quickly. And we got an attack down here, 
just a scouting party, really. It's gonna get cleaned up pretty quickly. Um, okay, and I believe I missed it again. In here, there's an upgrade for these little locusts, which makes them last, I believe, twice as long, which is really good, uh, because that means you can position your swarm hosts further back and send them further uh, along the way. Which means that the Protoss, if he wants to kill the Swarm Host, he's going to have to fight through all of this. Instead of them blowing up halfway through and then, you know, running out of life, basically. Um, okay, so what are the big game things have we got? Now it's time to focus on the game. I've explained enough of the Zerg, I think, that we can focus on the game at hand. The Protoss is going to be putting down a few more warp gates, because uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 isn't enough, apparently. Macro is intensely important online. And if we look at the APM, I'm at about 117 actions per minute. Uh, my average is about 120, so that's keeping true. And it looks like Protoss is ready to move out and see what he can do. Uh, I'm certain this base has been re-established by now. It would be foolish for the for the Zerg to, to just let that die and not do anything about it. So I'm going to be moving up, seeing what kind of damage I can do. I've brought along an Observer. And an Observer is useful for both seeing um, these guys when they're burrowed. They're invisible now unless I've got this Observer, which has detection. And I can also see these Creep Tumors. And if we click on a Creep Tumor and look at Subtle Tree's view, he can no longer see this area. Um, so these guys are really important. But up here, the attack's gonna be coming in, trying to kill out, kill off this third base. Uh, but a lot of locusts is gonna be in the way, and it's gonna be a little tough. Can we see the swarm host? We can, but there's a lot going on. And Zergling's coming in for a flanking maneuver. I had a couple of extra locusts to help out, and this Protoss army is gonna be surrounded, and no units in StarCraft do well when they're surrounded, so... We're gonna try to get out of here as soon as we can. There it is, there's the retreat. And I'm warping in some more units back home to resupply. You've got to do that. Um, this base is going pretty well by now. I've got three more warp gates up. All of these are done. Zerg has now established this, but it's not, it's not fully uh, operational, really. And it looks like we're gonna start to see an infester push come up and try to maybe siege this area. I've got a couple of cannons to hold off, but against, uh, 1, 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 times 2, 24 locusts, they're not gonna do a whole lot. Um, but anyway, down here, um, I'm gearing up for an attack on this base here. Even though I don't know if anything's here, you can just use your army to scout it out to see, uh, you know, if, if there's something there. It's a pretty effective thing. But now we've got the swarm hosts have come up even further, and here are some pretty nasty things called mutalisks. These guys can dart around the map, they're pretty quick, and if you get enough of them, they can wipe out all your workers in seconds. And then, as soon as your reinforcements arrive, they just leave and go to another base. And with zerglings here, this base doesn't stand much of a chance, except we've got this warp in here, or this uh, recall. And all these stalkers are going to be able to clean up the mutalisks. The zealots go for the zerglings. The sentries are coming back to help out, but they're not going to do a whole lot because everything's going to be, be cleaned up. But if we come up here, we can see the locusts are starting to do damage. I've already got one gateway down, uh, but the zealots here do clean up this base down here, which is good. But we've really got to be careful. Okay, now the stalkers are coming around. The mothership core goes down, which is actually a big deal because it was useful for recalls. And now we got a pretty decent-sized battle coming along. The locusts are not going the right way. There they go. Here they come to target down all these stalkers, and they're not actually going to be able to see these things yet. Here's the observer, though, so uh, we will get vision of these guys soon enough. And... There they go, and now I can start targeting down these lo these uh, swarm hosts. And this is, if we look at the army supply, uh, no, units lost tab, we can see that Zerg has now lost 14,000, about 4,000 more minerals in units than I have, which is kind of huge in an economy game like this one. Um, what else? The Zerg is going to be trying to hold this off, all the overlords here telling us they're to get into position, they're afraid of their pensions, get in position, please! Uh, but this attack is gonna be a little too strong, and I don't think there's gonna be too much more that you can do with reinforcements. The Zerg really should have stayed on more basic stuff, probably 
waited until they were more secure in their expansions before trying to go for these really expensive units here. They are high tier, very expensive units. And all you need to, to take them out basically is an observer and target fire. So really they should have stuck with some more basic units um, and got their economy really rolling until they could get that number of units up that they really needed. And that is the first game I've ever casted. I think I did a pretty decent job. I explained a lot of things about the Zerg. I hope you guys learned a lot about how this game can go, how it looks when it's casted, how it looks when it's played. I had a, I had a huge amount of fun making it. I'm still not actually done. I still have to um, dub over the gameplay video of this particular game, which you've already seen by now, because I'm going to put it before this, the magic of editing, blah, blah, blah. Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you very much. I had a, a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun learning about this game. And I'm not even asking you to get into it. I literally just want to show why it's such a cool game. And I think I've done that by now. So, once again, <laughs> thank you for watching, and goodbye.